hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jodi and I help you change your beliefs so you can change your body, your health and your life. So this video, I wanted to discuss a few misconceptions about fat loss and fitness in general that a lot of people have before you actually get into the process of properly losing body fat and improving your body composition. Because a lot of you are so focused on getting lean, losing body fat, that you are missing out on the other side of the equation, which involves building muscle. And at some point in your journey, it's very likely you are going to have to go through a building phase in order to actually get that lean body you desire because this fat loss thing, it's not a linear process. For some of you, it might be. If you're coming from a background of being very overweight and you just wanna lose some weight, lose some body fat and that's it, then that might get you to where you want to be. But if you are not coming from that background, then it's very likely that to get that body that you desire, that lean, tight, toned body, to lose that stubborn body fat that you're carrying, you are going to have to go through different phases in your journey to get there. That could look like going through body recomposition to start with, going into a build, going into a cut, then going through a reverse diet, then going through another build, and then going through another cut, maybe even multiple cycles of that before you actually get there, just depending on how your body responds to everything, what your starting position was, and what your desired end goal actually is. But I think that is actually one of the biggest misconceptions in itself is that it is a linear process or you can just do the same thing for a number of weeks or maybe even a number of months and get to your end goal, but it's actually not the case at all. Aside from that, one of the other biggest misconceptions I wanted to bring to your attention is this kind of thought or understanding, I guess, that fitness people, because they know what they're doing and they know how to lose body fat, should always look shredded. And if they don't, then something must be wrong with them. That is not the case at all. And it's really important for you to understand that fitness people that actually know what they're doing generally will not look their leanest for a big part of the year, because that is when we are going through building stages. We are carrying a bit more body fat and that is all in the pursuit of still improving our body composition, getting to a leaner physique in the long term, but it takes stepping back and actually going in the opposite direction for a while to get there. I know before I got into all of this, I was one of those people. I would judge people that were carrying extra body fat if they were in the fitness industry. And I used to think like, why would they want that extra fat on them when they can just keep it off? Surely if they really knew what they were doing, they would be lean all the time. It's actually not the case. People that you see that are lean year round and look the same year round, I would assume have some kind of eating disorder or body image issue. And I know that is wrong to assume we shouldn't, but I've just, it is so common in the fitness industry, disordered eating, especially in those that compete. And like, I know people personally that have had these issues from competing. It's often those people in the fitness industry that have the poorest body image as well. And there is a lot of pressure, I guess, to always be looking your best if you are in the industry, especially. But I think it's important for everyone to understand that to really respect your health and your body, you shouldn't be shredded all the time and you shouldn't be aiming to be shredded all the time either and this leads on to the next misconception is that you are going to feel your best when you are at your leanest and there is a very big difference between truly being lean and shredded which is what a lot of you desire versus being muscular carrying a little bit of extra body fat but not too much still still being lean overall but not being actually super shredded and often when you actually start going through the process and going through a building phase properly coming out of that dieting mindset all the time you're going to realize how good it actually feels and then when you go back into a deficit you're going to notice how crap it feels and the thing is a lot of you are so used to dieting all the time and restricting yourself all the time and pushing your body to the limits in terms of exercise maybe you're doing no exercise and just not eating right and always trying to restrict yourself around food 
you get so used to that, you don't realize what it feels like to be out of that. And then I notice this with a lot of my clients, they go through a building phase, they spend time at maintenance, a lot of them, because they are recomping to start with, they're in that position. And then they'll go through a building phase and then they'll go into a deficit again and they're eating more in a deficit than what they started with when they came to me. And all of a sudden they're like, oh my goodness, this is so hard. I don't know if I can do this. They really notice the toll it takes on your body. And then to get to that extreme end, to get really shredded, you have to keep going through that and it gets tiring. Your body is gonna start feeling not the best and you're gonna be hungry, you're going to be exhausted. Doing anything becomes harder, really. And so that is why a lot of people in the fitness industry go about carrying extra body fat when they could be lean and shredded all the time quite easily, but it's just not worth it because it doesn't feel good. And I know for me, I used to look up to certain mentors of mine in the fitness industry, and they were always that little bit bigger. They weren't like lean and shredded all the time, and now I understand why. Now the last misconception is that extremes are bad. When it comes to dieting, extremes long-term, yes, I would not recommend that. But in order to lose that last bit of body fat, stubborn body fat, it's likely going to take some extreme measures. And remember, nothing really is good or bad without context. So if you have set yourself up well, if your health is still in check, and if you have spent time out of a diet, if you have gone through a proper build phase and have actually given your body a break from all the stress around dieting, then going into a cut and then going through some extreme measures, especially towards the end of a cut, in a defined time space, right? So you don't wanna be doing this forever, of course not, but doing it for a specified amount of time, it's probably going to take that to get to where you wanna go. And again, it comes back to it's not gonna feel great. You are going to feel really hungry. You are going to feel like it is a lot of stress on the body that you are going to put your body under. That is why you don't want to do it forever because you will burn out and you need to be very careful. You need to probably implement diet breaks and stuff like that, depending on how you are responding. But it is what it is. It's probably going to take that at some point. But it comes back to making sure that you are responding. And in order to respond, you can't be doing the same thing forever and expect your body to change. So someone actually messaged me on Instagram the other day asking how they get rid of that last bit of lower belly fat. And I asked them what they were doing. They had been dieting. They were training hard. And I said, basically, you have two options, right? You take things up a notch you eat less and move more, or you can like eat the same and add more activity in, or you can go in the other direction and come out of diet, which is what I've recommended, actually start training with intensity again, because you don't realize when you're dieting and you're training, you will be training hard, but there's only so much your body can push when it's lacking food. When you give it that food again, you can push things so much harder. And so anyway, I said, that is what you should do. And then one of his comments he came back with was that his appetite was high and he was already burning like a thousand calories in the gym. And that's the thing, right? Like your appetite is gonna be high. It doesn't matter how much activity you're doing in the gym. That is how you're going to reach into those stubborn fat stores and force your body to use it is by taking things up to another level, going to almost that extreme and making sure your body doesn't have the energy it needs to go through that activity. And so you do have to push the limits to get that stubborn fat off you. Just because something is really uncomfortable doesn't mean it's bad for you. And I'm by no means saying go and starve yourself at all. Please do not. Me, honestly, now with where I'm at in my life and with my body image, it's not really worth it to me to go to those extreme levels unless I were to compete. That would probably give me the motivation to do it. But I don't really know if even doing that is worth it. Now, something else you have to realize is that it doesn't necessarily get easier losing stubborn body fat as you go through the process, but as you build more muscle and build those calories up, you will be able to lose body fat on higher and higher calories. 
which means that it does get easier in the sense that you won't feel so restricted around what you get to eat throughout the day. That is why I always come back to get as much muscle in your body as possible. Don't be scared to build those calories up as high as possible. And even if it means gaining a little bit of body fat through the process, it is going to be worth it because it makes everything easier in the long run. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email or comment below. If you liked it, please like it. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if that's the case, I will see you in the next video.